Suspected Boko Haram insurgents have demanded $500,000 for the release of four abducted humanitarian workers and a security guard after the captives made passionate appeal to the federal government as well as their respective organizations for intervention. The captives' plea was contained in a two-minute video released by the Islamic sect on showing the humanitarian workers and staff of State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, Others include staff of Action Against Hunger, Rich International, International Rescue Committee, and a private security guard urging the government to intervene. Terrorists killed 12 AIDS workers in Nigeria in 2019. To give us more perspective on this is a security consultant and expert, Colonel Ola Majeyogbe, retired. Good morning, uh, Colonel, and thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning. Thank you. Now, our record in rescuing captives from Boko Haram terrorists seem very poor. What should we do differently, starting with these abducted aid workers? Okay, first, it is important to explain that trying to rescue our uh, kidnapping from terrorists by military intervention is an extremely dangerous undertaking because as we all know terrorists are very violent they are usually armed they expect that now and again governments or uh, groups may try to spring a surprise and uh, release those that they have captured. My opinion is that uh, in this part of the world, I'm talking about the West African sub-region, we do not have troops adequately trained to carry out such operations. We don't have such troops like the seals of the United States, special air service of the United Kingdom, or even the Egyptian commandos. So I will not advise that government should make any attempt to release people who have been captured by terrorists. Now, an average civilian, Colonel, is confused on the audacity of these terrorists when they are told the terrorists don't have any territory under control. Can you help us make sense, you know, with this released video? What we see is that, indeed, they are still in charge, if you like, in certain quarters. Yes, that is not surprising to me. One of the main challenges of the multinational joint task force fighting terrorists, I mean, Boko Haram and their collaborators, is that the battle space is too big. What do I mean by that? There are long distances between those areas that are manned by security men. I have said this many times, and I'm going to repeat it because it is relevant. Brodo State is bigger than some countries in Europe. The boundary between Brodo State and Cameroon is 1,500 kilometers. So we just do not have the men trained to do that job by speaking a surprise. Now, the multinational joint task force today have adopted what they call super camps. What does that mean? That means that wherever they are, they will be in camps. And those camps will be very, very highly fortified. Those troops in the camps also 
will be very well armed and able to resist any attack from the terrorists. But since you cannot possibly man every bit of ground, the terrorists will always attack villages and locations where you do not have enough security men. I believe that Nigeria has to at least double the present strength of the Nigerian army if we are going to make any success of the fight against Boko Haram and their collaborators. You mentioned earlier, Colonel, that the, the Nigerian government should do anything within its power to see that, you know, abducted persons like these aid workers are released. Should the ransom be considered or a swap, you know, as we see in America? What's your thought? Good. As far as I'm concerned, the only option that we have in the circumstances in which we are is to negotiate with the terrorists. You see, I have had people say on radio and television or in um, interviews that it is wrong to negotiate with terrorists. I am happy that you made that comment. Look, all these countries, particularly the United States, always negotiate with terrorists or people in that kind of group. So you negotiate. Sometimes they ask for money. At other times, they ask for the release of their colleagues. We have a lot of Boko Haram that are, we speak are in custody. So if they bring people that they have kidnapped and they say to you, let us have a deal, if we are serious about the safety of those captured people, the best thing is to negotiate. That is, you ask them, how many of our men do you have? Maybe they have um, one two, three, or four people. And they will say to you, you have our people in custody. Release whatever number. If I were to take the decision, I will pay whatever amount of money they ask for to release somebody who is in their captivity. Because as I said, <laughs> bringing special operations to try to release them is unlikely to be successful. Don't forget that the terrorists are prepared to die. In other words, they're ready to do anything. And in trying to release the captured people, you may end up actually killing them. That is, you get into a firefight and the terrorists and their uh, victims are killed in the fight. So it, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, um, unfortunately, over time, we've all, all, always seen that health workers are, you know, victims. And with the insurgency and all that is going on in most parts of the countries, you would agree that we need, you know, the intervention and the help of, of, the help of these aid workers. How do you advise them on the mode of operations in places like this, where you know they are prone to being kidnapped or, and you know to be at the mercy of terrorists? Good. We must thank the aid workers and other people who are involved in humanitarian activities in the battle space. Now, there are times when these volunteers actually take unnecessary risks. It's good to volunteer to help our fellow countrymen and women, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to be heroes. 
Because we are dealing with people who do not operate under any law, metropolitan or international law. They respect no convention. In other words, they are not like our troops who have to operate under the Geneva Conventions and the laws of land conflict. So when you are dealing with people like that, volunteers, aid workers, people in logistics, whoever is involved has to be very circumspect. How can they do that? They stay with the troops in the safe areas. When other areas are liberated, then you can move forward. But to go far away from the troops, when you are fighting people who respect no laws, they are not bound by any convention. I mean, they are laws unto themselves. I think it's a necessary risk. One does not have to commit suicide in the process of trying to save other people. So what is my direct answer? Stay with the men who are involved in the combat. Do not go beyond the battle space or places that have not been garrisoned. That would be my advice to them. Uh, security consultant Ola and retired Colonel, Colonel, we appreciate your thoughts and contributions on news on the app. Please do keep safe out there. Yes, thank you very much, and I thank you for the opportunity.